the other day there was a phone call between Joe Biden and Xi Jinping. It was unexpected, uh, but the call did go through. Uh, mm-hmm. I suspect that it was Joe Biden probably tra- telling, t- talking to Xi, saying, hey, man, can you help us out on the battlefront of Ukraine and Russia? Uh, straighten something out. We we need to we need an off ramp over here. We're you know we're getting slaughtered on the battlefield. Uh, mm-hmm. The Russians are starting to expand the front line, moving it more further west, and that's not good for Kiev. Uh, and I would assume that Xi Jinping would tell them, uh uh-uh, uh, no, go scratch. Um, you know you've brought us closer together, and you know you had Minsk one, Minsk two. You use it as a uh, de- delay tactic so that you can build up the forces to go bomb innocent civilians in the Donbas. So I ain't helping you out on this one. But the one thing that I really took from the conversation. And it really spells what's going out there nowadays, right? That it's a different China now, and it's a different relationship. Because Xi Jinping made it a point to tell him, listen, Taiwan, red line. In other words, I don't know how you say it in Mandarin, but he pretty much said, F around and find out. Like, we're not going to do this. Taiwan is for China. And if you start the same stuff you did in Ukraine, it, it, we're going to respond accordingly. What are your thoughts on Xi Jinping and the relationship today between China and the United States? Oh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden is obviously Xi Jinping's puppet. That's what everybody says, right? I mean, ridic- I mean ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. Naturally. Yeah, it's it's all part of the, the Xi Jinping CPC Chai Com scheme um, to have 140,000 U.S. troops center surrounding their their perimeter in the Pacific and, and running regime change operations with the NED in Hong Kong and Taiwan, which, by the way, the current configuration of power in Taiwan is the effect of a CIA NED uh, regime change called the Sunflower Revolution in 2014, the same year that the NED and the, the State Department were bankrolling the overthrow of an elected government um, in Yanukovych in Ukraine. Same yeah. thing. Um, they're a little bit more of a, of, a, of a soft, passive culture there, so you don't have the same type of Nazi fervent as you had with the Ukraine expression of the thing, but it's still it's the same thing. And now you have Green Berets being deployed to Taiwan to train the Taiwanese military. Yeah. Um under a, a preparation for a frontal war against China. And we're being told that China is the bad guys when we actually recognize Taiwan as part of China yeah. on our own. Like that's what the Canadian, the US, European governments all recognize Taiwan as just yeah. an autonomous province of China. Um, but despite that, we are putting bilateral treaties, fueling billions of dollars of weapons, of training of Green Berets and other things, right? As part of this NATO of the Pacific, which Japan now as well is being brought into this whole AUKUS, you know, Pacific NATO operation, which was just announced this week, where they already have 58,000 U.S. troops stationed in Okinawa and, and Japan as a whole, as well as 28,000 troops with bio labs and THAAD missile shields in South Korea. But China is the belligerent. They want yeah. this. And by the way, just not to interrupt, I loved your what you put on your Twitter not too long ago. I saw it. I caught it the other day with the Japanese prime minister in Congress coming to Congress talking about we got to be careful with the Russians starting any type of nuclear program furthering it. This is a country that was bombed with two nuclear <laughs> bombs by the United States killing civilians. You want to talk about this? bending the knee right <laughs> and oh, lackeys i'm sorry to interrupt but i thought it was great that you put that up and now we're stationing all these troops in okinawa and we're getting ready please continue oh dude no it's painful the irony it's so post it's, ah, you can't make I this know. shit up <laughs> uh, so, and no here's the other thing too like abe shinzo abe when he got killed he was not for this sort of thing he was he was like a um in a very difficult position, but he was able to navigate through the private and public sector and create a lot of bilateral trees with Russia, with China, that he was facilitating a lot of economic development on projects that would unite their their interests in developing the Russian Arctic with Chinese companies on oil pipelines and other things. So that was too disruptive. He had to go. And now Kishida and this whole crowd incoming, they're they're bringing in a whole bunch of baggage, including and this is all part of the Ty- the Ukraine of the Pacific operation. It's both Taiwan as well as Japan, as well as South Korea. They want to bring in the Philippines um, they're they're They've changed their pacifist constitution under under pressure by the the Anglo-American uh, military. They've they've gotten rid of their pacifist constitution, now allowing Japan for the first time to declare any war. In defense of their allies, whatever that means, is it the U.S. your ally? Well, they, they're they're happy to like bring you off the map if need be. But apparently, um, the you know the New Zealand and Australia are increasingly uh, big parts of the British Commonwealth's uh, Five Eyes NATO Compact of the Pacific, along with Canada. That's joining AUKUS pretty soon too. That's what Justin Trudeau just said, which is also extending the 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 ballistic missile shield, according to the new Canadian Defense Doctrine for the Arctic, into the Arctic. That was put down in 2005 by uh, 
Jean Chrétien and uh, uh, Paul Martin, our, our prime ministers back then, who had a little bit more gumption today, they were they were whores. Don't get me wrong, but they had a little bit more sense of self interest, and they said no to, to you know Arctic Star Wars back then. Now it's coming back online. Yes, yeah. preparation to attack both China and Russia from the the Arctic zone. So the whole thing to say Justin Trudeau, and I'm saying this now because there's currently CSIS, that's the Canadian version of the CIA. They're mm -hmm. sponsoring public inquiries into Chinese election interference um, that put Justin Trudeau in power in 2016 or 2015 and again in 2021. So it's the CSIS who is being hailed by the, the right wing conservatives of Canada as the great champions of freedom against the CPC when it was understood for most of Canada's history that CSIS is an agency that does evil, that, that they are the ones behind a lot of the terrorist activities that even went public. This is not even like conspiracy theory stuff. This is public knowledge that the, the shoot down of the Air India flight in the, in the 1980s was carried out and overseen by Canadian intelligence. Um, the same thing with the, the, the shooter. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of examples. Now, all of a sudden, these people are being cherished as the heroes defending us from the evil CPC who put Justin Trudeau in power, who's preparing the groundwork in the Arctic to do a, a strike on China and their key allies, Russia, which have a bond of survival. Like, that's the thing. Russia and China have a unified bond of survival. It is an yeah. unbreakable core uh, uh, alliance that is everything. That is what, what's making the whole resistance to the New World Order work. And the fact that we have gotten it in our heads that if we want to fight the New World Order, we have to give consent to go to war with China or Russia. Um, it's insane. It's totally yeah. insane.